Hello, everybody, wherever you may be from coast to coast and sea to shining sea. Welcome back to the shack. This is Ham Radio Live. Big show today. Lots of stuff that will absolutely stun you. I promise. And if you're not stunned, well, please don't share it with your neighbors. It gives bad publicity, you know? <laughs> Happy Friday, world. Except for just on the other side of the dateline. It's June 4th, 2021. This is Ham Radio Live, show number 218. We're going to talk about lots of stuff today, including a rural sideband. Yeah, working the Northern Lights, plus an update on the Gray Line performance. Incredible flagpole antenna. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's great to see you wherever you are. My name's Larry. My call sign is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Right there is my best friend, Bob. That is my brother, Bob, live here. He wanted to be in the studio, so he's over there in the other chair, and he says hi as well. We'll welcome some folks around the world first here. Here, Joe McConaughey. Welcome, buddy. Alpha Golf 7, X-Ray Hotel. Are you still in the Carolinas, or are you back in the uh, state of Washington? Good to see you, man. First up, thank you. Cliff Bolts, Whiskey Delta 4, Oscar Bravo Papa. Hello to you from the Commonwealth of Virginia. Kevin's here from Great Britain. Happy field day to you there in Great Britain. Mike Zero, Mike Charlie Lima, nice to see you. Welcome to the show, everybody. We'd love for you to get an amateur radio. It is such a fun hobby. This is just the coolest thing in the world. You meet people from all over the world. You get a chance to make some incredible calls from the comfort of your home. It's the greatest hobby in the history of ever. I want to personally thank the person that invented ham radio. Thank you. <laughs> Call the ARRL. They're good, good people. They can contact you with a radio club that's near you. Find them online at www.arrl.org. That's www.arrl.org. Hit the Contact Us section. They'll help you find a radio club near you. Also in Japan, the Japan Amateur Radio League can be found at www.jarl.org. Our mates in Great Britain celebrating field day today happy field day to all y'all in the great british commonwealth contact the radio society of great britain at www.rsgb.org if you're in canada the radio amateurs of canada are right there easy to find www.rac.ca for our mates down under the australian group is solid they're good and they'll help you find a radio club to get started because see what you have to do you have to find out how to get your license, right? Any of these groups can help you get into ham radio. And man, once you get in, if you don't like to talk in a microphone, no worries. You can just use digital. You can make text messaging just like, you know, on your phone, but cooler. Because we're the ones who invented the doggone thing in the first place. Did you know that? We're the original text messaging. Yes. <laughs> You can send pictures, videos. You can do amazing things. Even contact the astronauts up in the space station. You really can. Call one of these people. You can get a hold of the Australian radio group there at the Wireless Institute of Australia. Their web address is www.wia.org. If you'd like to email the show, talk about what is going on here, have some feedback, even talk about a product. I get lots of product questions. That's probably the number one thing I get. Email me at cqhamradiolive at gmail.com. Welcome to the show, June 4th, 2021. It's an honor to see you today. Thank you for coming, everybody from around the world. All right, Michael Helton. Thank you, my friend. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Yankee Echo Zero, Victor India Lima out of the UK. Very happy field day to you, Mike. Thanks for coming. Thor is here. Made it to a live stream from Minnesota. Thor's call sign, Kilo Zero, Tango Juliet Tango. Thor, welcome back, man. It's great to see you from the great green north. Scott, welcome back. It's great to see you. Tom is here from Bahrain. Thank you for being here, my friend. Alpha Echo One, Tango Papa, his Bahrain call sign, Alpha 92 Golf Whiskey. You know, today's show is going to be cool. We're going to show you how we built the flagpole antenna. We're going to show you how it works going to show you the latest calls with it plus we're going to talk about something you don't really hear much about and that's auroral propagation skip yep work in the aurora borealis or if on you know, the southern hemisphere the aurora australis it's really cool and we'll be talking about that on today's show first of all the trivia question this is a neat one which experiment 
of Nikola Tesla has proven to be the most beneficial solely to modern radio communications. Okay? Think about that. Which of his experiments has benefited radio? Is it A, his Tesla coil, B, his atmospheric and ground wave experience, ex sorry, experiments, C, his teleforce, or D, lighting 25 light bulbs with voltage running through his body? Just hold everything, everybody. <laughs> it's kind of a weird one, but there you go. A, B, C, or D? Let me know your answer and we will get to you. First of all, the RSGB field day is today. The objective to work as many stations and multipliers as quickly and accurately as possible. Operating under portable conditions. Yeah, this means bringing your ham radio out in the world to show the world what ham radio is all about. It's happening today and tomorrow. This is great. This is so cool. You can use CW, you can use sideband. Only one signal may be transmitted at any one time. A station may be contacted once on each band. Find out more information on the RSGB website. Contest calendar, there you go. We've got quite a big one this weekend, including an open season PSK contest, which is going to be pretty cool on digital Yeah, for folks that like to do that. And, of course, we have the RSGB Field Day there, which is a very, very special show. Well, we'll the contest, we'll talk about that right here. It's going to be on 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters, okay? QRP, get on the air, renewable energy, unassisted portable or assisted portable. Those are the classes. So you can use a battery. You can use solar panels, right? Those are, those are classes. It's great. Now, the power, low power is 100 watts or less. QRP is 5 watts, period, okay? The exchange is your signal report and serial number, okay? The information about how to get your log is right there. So send your log information to the link that's right there that ends with Papa Lima, okay? That's how you'll get that in, okay? Also, this is such a big contest for our three other side Great Britain. This is their field day, and it's a very special event. We want to give them the very best of luck in that today. Going around the world, special events. Martinique is still going on. It's being done by Oscar November 4, Romeo Uniform. Okay, that's where you'll find that. And basically, he's doing it kind of holiday style when he has a chance. So he's doing CW as Tango Zero Three. Foxtrot. Look for that on CW. Christmas Island VK9XX is working by the call sign VK6 Sierra Juliet. He's going to be on 80 through 40 and even 30 meters using FT8 wires and perhaps a vertical antenna. Yeah, going to be looking for him on mornings and evenings. That's the Christmas Island de expedition. And then don't forget Crete. That's a good one, really. It's done by Delta Lima 3, Delta Romeo November, okay? All bands, CW, SSB, it's going to be some radio teletype, QSL via Delta Lima 3, radio, sorry, Delta Radio November. Again, Delta Lima 3, Delta Radio November. Tonga, it's a good one. J-A-0-R-Q-V, sorry. When you have... You know, the letter O and zeros, you got to take a real careful look. And it can be tough on this screen, so I apologize for that. But Tonga is really good. That's a great, great deal. It's going to be a Morse code, sideband, FT8, QSL, club log on uh, Oscar, Quebec, Romeo, Sierra. You can see the web for details, and dates may change due to the coronavirus, but take a look for that. That'll be a fun, fun contest. Alpha 35 Juliet Papa. Vietnam, look at that. Vietnam's right there. X-Ray Victor 9 Radio Hotel. This is a good one. It's done by Oscar Echo 1, Juliet Uniform November. It's going to be CW FT8 at 100 watts out of Hanoi. Look for the call sign. Juliet Hotel 4, Radio Hotel Foxtrot. The British Virgin Islands, they've got one going on. Yep, done by November Charlie 3, Zulu. It's going to be working as Victor Papa 2, Victor slash November Charlie 3 Zulu. That's British Virgin Islands going on 
through the 14th of June. Should be a lot of fun. Some more de-expeditions. Somalia. Yep. Out of Mogadishu. Going to be mainly FT8. Just kind of spare time operation. And uh, look for that. That'll be that'll be a neat contest. Six. Oscar one. Oscar Oscar is the call there. Niger. Five uniform. Alpha. India Hotel Mike. Going to be basically CW 40 and 20 on a wire antenna. Haiti. You've got call sign Hotel Hotel 2, Juliet Alpha. Logbook of the World is where you'll get your QSL. It's being done by Juliet Kilo 1, Uniform Whiskey Yankee. FM out of Petition, I'm sorry, Petonville on 80 through 6 meters. CW, SSB, and FT8. Spare time operation there. And uh, that may go on for three years out of Haiti. Pretty cool. Nigeria, 5 November 7, Mike Sierra Foxtrot. It's going to be EQ, EQSL for your QSL cards. It's being done by Fox 5, Mike Alpha Whiskey, focusing on 20 meters and 15, 100, 100 watts. He's using a quad antenna. It's going to be a spare time operation. Should continue on till September 15th. Martinique, Christmas Island, and Crete, we already talked about. Special events, 75th anniversary of the ISWL. Yep. Done by our great mates in Great Britain. How about that? Pretty cool. <laughs> Special event station, Golf Bravo 75 ISWL. Going to be operated through 2021 from Walton on the Nye. I'm going to say it probably on the Nays in Essex. Also by Herbie Golf 6 X-Ray Oscar Uniform. So this is going to be kind of fun, celebrating the 75th anniversary of the formation of the International Short Wave League in 1946. I like this because I'm an old short wave guy, and that's pretty neat that they're honoring that. 75th anniversary goes with the 75th anniversary, by the way, of the, you know, America, of the, excuse me, the radio and television handbook. 75 years there, too. 75th anniversary of Kaliningrad coming out of Russia. That's Romeo Kilo 75 Alpha Kilo. Also known as United Alpha 2, Foxtrot Alpha Kilo. And they're going to be in use between the 14th of April and 31st of July to mark the 75th anniversary of Kaliningrad. In 1946, Northern East Prussia was annexed as part of the Russian SFSR by the Soviet Union and named the Kaliningrad Oblast. So they're celebrating that. Pretty cool. Also, the Olympic Games in Tokyo. That Still goes on. There are so many different call signs, and they all end with Olympic. Can't miss them, all right? We'll go on to VK again. This is, uh, sorry, UK. This is kind of cool. Uh, again, celebrating shortwave. You know, help them out with that. Shortwave is one of those things that, you know, people still do out there, and it's popular. Field day, get ready in the U.S. That's coming up June 26th, June 27th. New gear, in fact, this weekend, a special sale, $10 t-shirt, save in style for field day. Good look, good, good looking shirt. Look at that. Not bad. $10. You can get that for $10. Make sure you use the offer code 21 Tango Echo Echo. So 21T and you'll get a field day t-shirt for $10. On the forecast, we've got a pretty solid sun. Thank goodness gracious. That, that beautiful ball of light in the sky. Thank you. This is the last three days of solar flares. It's been pretty quiet. Not too bad. That's why we have pretty quiet conditions. Aurora forecast, you can take a look. Not much of, you know, the Aurora Borealis going on in the Northern Hemisphere. Aurora South, this is the uh, Aurora Australis. Not much there either. So not much charging going on. And because of that, that's what we have for a forecast. Take a look. The Aurora, <laughs> take a look, band closed. And that's why. There's just nothing up there, so there's nothing to work with right now. We'll look at the noise floors in just a moment. Take a look at the SFI at 73. The A index is 6. K index is 1. Think of this as a day that's a sunny day, all right? But it's not warm, all right? And what I mean by that, I'll get to the forecast and I'll explain it very clearly to you. Take a look at yesterday's conditions. See, the SFI was 76. Now it's 73. That's a big difference. Three can make a big difference, especially when it comes to making calls. On 20 meters tonight, you'll hear signals, but they're going to be weaker because we just do not have enough charging of the ionosphere. 
world map for the noise floors around the world. We'll start in Australia today. S4 on 40 meters, S1 on 20. New Zealand has an S1 on 40 meters and S3 on 20 meters. Up in Russia, 40 meters, S3, 20, S5. I checked four SDRs, it's S5. Out of India, 40 meters, S5, 20 meters, S5. In Europe, S4 in Germany, check three SDRs, it's accurate, 20 meters, S4. In Great Britain, 40 meters, S3, and S3 as well on 20. S3 is throughout North America, from Canada all the way to southern United States. In South America, S4, uh, sorry, S1 on 20 meters, and S1 on uh, 40 as well. On the other side there, the Pacific side in Argentina, out of Buenos Aires, S3 on 40, S1 on 20, and in the middle of the Pacific, Hawaii has an S1 that's breaking out right now on um, the uh, 40 meter band, and S3 on 20 MUFs around the world. Boulder, Colorado, 17.81. But Athens, Greece, right there. Nighttime, still. 23.83. Lowest in the world right now is Darwin, Australia. Poor Darwin. 7.02. But it will come up as the sun rises. So, you know, it's typical southern hemisphere. You have a lower MUF because it's not as bright there. The sun doesn't shine as long. Forecast today. It's going to be 20 meters, 17 and 15 You'll have some 10 meter e skip, but they'll be there. They just have you have to hit the clouds. That's all. When you hit the ionospheric clouds that provide that 10 meter propagation, it will work. Possible e skip on two, four, and six meters. Of course, CW and data open all the way on 40 through four meters. Cam nighttime tonight: 160, 80, 75, 60, 40, 30, and I believe a 50 percent chance of SSB tonight on 20 meters. But there is a caveat. It's going to be weak signals. It's just there's just not enough charge to the ionosphere. That's the honest truth. We just don't have enough, you know, strength there from the SFI. Three or four points can make a big difference, but it will be quiet. That's the good thing. Shortwave bands today: 31, 25, 22, 19, and 16. Shortwave nighttime: 120, 90, 75, 60, 49, 49. Remember, that's the big one. That's got most of the frequencies on it. Where shortwave broadcasters are as well as 31 and the 41 meter band. That's it. That's your forecast today from K7HN here in Oregon with my brother Bob sitting right behind me saying a big howdy do. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about the flagpole antenna from Grayline Performance. This literally looks perfect. It does. There's just no comparison. I mean, you cannot change. You can't tell this from the flagpole at the library or in front of City Hall, it looks the same. It really does. Now, I haven't inserted the cleat in this yet. It does come with a cleat in the kit, just FYI. But people have asked, okay, how do you build this? You know, how in the heck does this work? Not only will I explain how this works, but I'll also show you the latest calls with it. This is their elevation chart that they've developed, and it compares against the Cushcraft R9 and the high gain AV680 vertical, all right? At 20 feet, you can see the difference in takeoff angle. A little lower, 28 feet, lower again, because of course you've got greater height. So, you know, you could think 28, you could go with 20. Either way, you've got a really nice takeoff angle. You've also got these angles from each one of the antennas, okay, each one. Now the bottom one is 43 feet high, just an FYI, okay? I know it comes in a little bit small. So I'm going to try and back out a little bit. No, it won't show it. Sorry. So there you go. 12, you can see it's kind of high. 16 gets lower. 20 lowers tremendously. 28 gets out there and the gain gets stronger as well. And then you get, you know, some multi-lobes there on the 43 meter one. For, sorry, 43 feet uh, pillow. 43 foot one. Say that three times fast. My feed point. And this is how it looks at the bottom of the antenna. This is the bottom two sections. One section goes in the ground about three feet, and then it goes up from there, okay? And you can pull it out from the PVC pipe. It's very stable. This is survived 40 mile per hour winds, no problem, okay? I just simply purchased a hollow boulder from Amazon. I cut a hole in it there for the feeder to enter it. Cut a small little slot on the other side for the coax to come out. Underneath all of that 
is a ballon. This is the MFJ-912. It takes the balance feeder from the antenna, which is the flagpole, converts it there four to one to a coaxial cable that's at the bottom, okay? Then it goes to the MFJ-915 line isolator. This helps keep RF off the skin of the coax. You want that to be clean. You want to make sure that everything stays clean and you don't get any RF on your feed line coming into your shack. Still not quite done yet. You also need to get a remote tuner. Now I'm using the MFJ 998 RT. This is a full power 1500 watt QRO tuner. It will tune full legal limit. No problem whatsoever. It's very quiet. It's been very reliable and it's been very good. There's not much on YouTube about this antenna tuner because most people rely on antenna tuners that are inside their homes. Here's the problem. When you have an antenna tuner inside and you're using a vertical that's non-resonant outside, what you have is a high SWR. The, the feed line coming up is very, very high. It comes out as heat because we all know that when you don't have a good SWR, it, it bounces back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until finally it's just dissipated as heat. When you use a remote tuner like this, now it's tuned at the feed point. Okay, so instead of all the way to your shack from the antenna heating up the ground because of a poor SWR, you correct it right at the point of the antenna, send a resonant signal, or at least a signal that the radio likes much better, up to your shack, and then you make calls. That's the big difference. It will not heat the ground. Okay, you're going to get the most power out of your antenna by using a remote tuner rather than using a tuner inside your shack. Here's the back of the MFJ-998RT. You can see the input from the flagpole. The output goes to the shack, of course, to the, sorry, to the line isolator. And of course, always remember to ground your equipment. Also, I'm using in this setup the MFJ Guardian Angel Lightning Surge Protector for up to 50 ohm coax. These aren't very expensive, and it could make a difference in saving things like that very expensive tuner, okay? Looking up the flagpole, look, it just looks like a regular flagpole. There is nothing that looks odd to this. No one's going to look at this and say, that's a ham radio antenna. That's not a flagpole. In fact, take a look. Here's a section from it right here. I didn't put it up to 28 feet. I chose 24. This is wonderfully solid polished aluminum and it's thick it really is at each segment where it connects you see it's got reinforcements built in now it, of course it has the set of screws which are allen wrenches allen we use the little allen wrench for it but it's solid and doesn't flex at all really it doesn't flex hardly at all because of these connections right there and they go all the way up the antenna so this is a four foot section of it that i didn't use but look at the quality this is absolutely beautiful you can't tell this is a ham radio antenna. You just can't tell. And it's been the one thing I put up that my neighbors like. Of all the things I've done in my property, they like this. Go figure. Yeah, I'm not kidding. So the Gray Line Performance flagpole antenna, that's how you build it. You need those components. You need the ballon. You need that absolutely. You also need the tuner. You should have a line isolator, and you should have a lightning arrestor. You have all those pieces together, and you have something pretty brilliant. Remember, yes. Remember yesterday, I told you about Jim in the South Cook Islands. Sorry about losing the audio there, but we're working on fixing that. You know about the computer, all right? So Echo Five One Julia Delta is the only HF AM operator on Rorotonga in the South Cook Islands. Sorry for the misspelling of the word there. It's Rorotonga, not Rototonga. He's the only guy that does HF SSB there. The only one. Okay. And you heard last, you know, if you watched yesterday's show, you heard that you can hear him just fine. All right. Here's my first call using that flagpole in this configuration. Take a look. Quite a bit of QSB here. I'm sorry. Quite a bit of QSB. 
Could you just return your call sign only for me, my friend? I'm so sorry to trouble you with that. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November, back to you. QSL and gracias. Good, thank you so much, my friend, for returning my call. I know many are trying to reach you. 73 from Oregon. God bless you and all the very best. Ciao from Oregon. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November. Thank you so much for making my day. All right, so that was my very first call to Spain. The very first one. I'd never, ever made a QSO to Spain before. That was the first one. I was stunned. I was so amazed. I said this yesterday. I had to look three times at the radio to make sure it was on antenna B because I couldn't believe it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? 160, and I've found 80 at this height is just not, not working too well. It just does it. If it was higher, if I went with the 28, you know, or maybe a higher one, it would work better, especially on 80, okay? 160, the same thing. Mine's too short for that. But for 40 on, it is a screamer. Let me show you my second QSO with this antenna on 20 meters last night. Remember this guy? Kilo 7, Hotel November. Thank you, Jim. Nice to speak with you again. You're a 5959 here in Independence, Oregon. Name is Larry Lima Alpha Romeo, Romeo Yankee. Pleasure to speak with you again. I featured you on my YouTube channel today, Jim. It's a pleasure to speak with you again. Yeah, my pleasure, uh, Echo 51 Julia Delta, thank you very much for the signal report. It's coming off of a flagpole antenna at 24 feet high, so I'm very grateful to make the call to you. 73 to you, Jim. The very best, and keep up the good work from my very family here to you. Echo 51, Juliet Delta, Kilo 7, Hotel November is clear. 73, that's nice. Echo 51, Juliet Delta is clear. How about that right there? That was Jim in Rorotunga right there on that flagpole antenna. No joke. So... 5,500 miles to Spain, 5,500 miles to the Cook Islands with a pileup without an amplifier. And, you know, Andy, with all due respect, you say use radials. There's no need to. There's just, I mean, why would you with that, with what it does? Here's why you don't. What it is, is it's really like an off-center fed dipole. That, that's really what this is. When you look back up on this antenna, okay, let's take a quick look and I'll show you. It's using feeder. That's exactly what it's using. It's just using feeder, okay? So the feeder goes up the first section, four feet. It's separated by some isolators, so it keeps it away from the flagpole. So it keeps it centered, right? All right, so one conductor goes to the section that's going up, okay? So think of it this way. In that second, actually be the third section of the flagpole, the feeder comes up, all right? The first part of the feeder, meaning the right feeder, goes to, it would go here, okay? So it'd go right there, okay? So it goes up. Now it's going up the flagpole. The second side of the feeder, okay, that other line in the coaxial cable is going down, okay? So now if this was looking downward, the second piece of coax, uh, sorry, of a feeder is going right there. So it's an off-center fed dipole. It doesn't need radials. 
That's why it works. It's amazing, man. It's just amazing how it electrically works. There's no ground radios needed whatsoever because literally one piece goes up, the other piece goes down. It's a dipole. It's just off-center fed. That's what makes this thing so brilliant. From the Cook Islands to Spain, Grayland Performance has really made an outstanding product here. And I just want to tell them thank you for letting me review this. And wow, well done. On 40 up, this is a dynamite antenna. It just is. It really is. We'll try and do a CQ calling show with it. I'm not sure about tonight because conditions just aren't good. I mean, if we had a higher SFI, I'd be cool with it. But because the SFI is really anemic, it's just going to be a rough night. So better nights are ahead. We'll make sure and do that. I want to talk to you about something really cool. Really cool. Are you ready for this? And there's not many videos that do this. Let me show you. There's something out there that happens when we have solar flares. Okay? A solar flare causes the aurora borealis or in the southern hemisphere, the aurora australis. That's what it does. Okay? These are supercharged particles that are hitting the Earth's atmosphere due to a coronal mass ejection. That's how it works. Because the Earth is really just a giant magnet. That's what it is. So when the solar flare comes and that, that giant you know, burst of plasma comes towards the earth, what happens is you end up with a lot of ionized particles being supercharged and turned into light. Well, here's the deal. You have the ionosphere, right? So the ionosphere is up there and, you know, you've got all that, you know, A, you know, at the D, the D layer, which absorbs, the E layer, which re reflects, and then F1, F2 reflect as well, right? Well, the aurora goes between the E and the F layer. That's where the aurora is, okay? So when we send our signals up on HF, they're destroyed because the aurora borealis literally kills them. That's what it does. But there are people that work it by using the aurora, the charged particles in the aurora to make it work. Let me show you a video. And I'll put the video description and the, the content creator's channel in the description section. To show you, most people work, you know, Morse code. Most people try and work Morse code. And even if you work Morse code or SSB, it's going to sound very distorted, very, very strange. Almost like the creepy guy under the stairs in the dark strange. You have to have a good ear, a sharp mind, and a really quick pen to be able to make sure you can get these calls. They use grid squares to let you know where you're contacting via the Aurora. Take a look at this video shot with an ICOM radio working the Aurora. It's amazing on HF. Aurora 5 Aurora Fox November 32. Uh, call is Kilo Charlie 2 Whiskey Lima Radio. Over, over. Yeah, QSL, nice to see you again and beautiful signal on the Aurora 5 and 9 Aurora here. 59 Aurora Fox Norway 25. Over. QSL, Kevin, you're also 59, 59, 73, thank you. 73 and good luck, Victor Echo 3, Echo November, I'm going to QSY up 5. to see 
you and thank you for the call here and enjoy the opening. November 2, November Echo Hotel, Victor Echo 3, Echo November 73. Kilowatt 8, Charlie X-Ray, you're 5 and 5, 55 Aurora, Fox November 2, 5, over. Okay, you're 5 and 7, 5 and 7, Aurora, November, okay. Victor. Okay, take a look real quick. I want to make sure this is real clear. I can always tell. When content is really being absorbed by the viewers of this channel because the contents stop. I'm sorry, the comments stop. Just literally stop. Thank you for doing that because this is such a special segment. There's a few things on the rig I want you to look at. First of all, take a look to the left, okay? Just below the meter, you're seeing he's on upper side, Ben. He's not FM. He's on USB, okay? So he's on six meters, USB. All right. The second thing... Take a look at how wide his bandwidth is. It's 3.6 kilohertz. 3.6, you know, yeah, kilohertz. It's big. So he's trying to catch as much of the signal as he can. This is a fantastic video, and it shows how excellent this guy is at doing this. Because literally, he's hearing signals that I've I've watched this video twice. I cannot pick out some of these calls. This guy's brilliant. Enjoy. Echo 3, Echo November, Victor Echo 3, Echo November, Secure Aurora. Kilowatt 1, Juliet Golf. Kilowatt 1, Juliet Golf, thanks, you're 5 and 7, Aurora 57, Fox November 25, Fox Norway 25, over. Okay, John, very good, and thanks uh, for FN, was that 3-2 or 4-2? Okay, what was your grid again? Your grid was it FN 42 or 32? Kilowatt 1 Juliet Golf, I need your grid again. QSL, QSL, Fox November 32, thank you, 73. Victor Echo 3, Echo November, CQ Aurora. Is there a one station, a one? November Foxtrot, one Oscar, you're five and three, 53 Aurora, Fox November, two five, over. QSL, Fox November 42, thank you for the contact, and 73, Victor Echo 3, Echo November, secure Aurora. November 1, Kilo Oscar Hotel, thanks for the call, 5 and 7, Aurora 57, Fox November 25, Fox Norway 25, over. Okay, QSL on Fox Norway 25, we're Fox Norway 31, Aurora, you're 5 and 7, 5 and 7, name is Greg, thank you. Okay, Greg, well, nice to meet you, nice signal, my name is Kevin, Kilo Echo, Victor, India, November 73, and have fun, Victor Echo 3, Echo, November, CQ, Aurora. Uh, November 2, Mike Bravo, thanks for the call, 5 and 7, Aurora, 57, Aurora, Fox, November 2, 5, over. Go 
QSL, Fox November 401, Whiskey 1, Echo Quebec, you're 5 and 9, Aurora, Fox Norway, 25, over. Thank you, Roger, thank you. Thanks a lot, 73, QRZ, Victor Echo 3, Echo November, Aurora. Kilowatt 1, Kilowatt 1, Alberta Radio. Radio. Uh, kilowatt 1, ending radio. One kilowatt America radio, thanks. Five and nine Aurora fifty nine Fox November two five Fox November two five over. QSL, thanks for Fox November forty two and uh, enjoy the uh, Aurora opening seventy three. This is Victor Echo three Echo November secure Aurora. <laughs> Ending in whiskey, ending whiskey only. Was there a station ending whiskey? QRZ anybody, Victor Echo 3, Echo November. Uh, kilowatt 1, Tango, Alpha, Tango, I believe. Kilowatt 1, Tango, Alpha, Tango. Correct me if uh, I got it wrong. Uh, 5 and 7, Aurora, 57, Aurora, Fox, Norway, 25, Fox, November, 25, over. QSL, Kilowatt 1, Delta Alpha Tango. I got it. And good to hear you again. And nice to work you via the Aurora 73 and have fun. A Victor Echo 3, Echo November. Thank you, Aurora. How about that? That is amazing stuff. I, you know what? And I'll explain how it all works to you if you've never seen it. It's really pretty cool. I put the graphic up towards the end of the video. Let me show you real quick, all right? The Aurora, when you make Aurora calls, okay, it's pretty simple, okay? This is how it works. Basically, these are the levels of the ionosphere. Okay, you see the D layer down there, and then you see the E. F is way up high, you know, over 250 kilometers up. So that's F. That's where you get your long calls. Now, the reason why he's not getting calls, say, from thousands of miles away is because the aurora is really between the E and the F layer. Okay, it goes from about 200 kilometers up down to roughly 125 kilometers up. So... These signals are being worked from that area and bouncing to another area as close as possible. But because the height isn't there as high as it could be, say, with the F layer, that's the reason why the calls aren't going as far. Is it possible to make calls to other continents? Of course it is, especially when you have a really high aurora. Okay, If the aurora comes down lower to lower latitudes... You can make amazing calls, for example, from North America to Europe, from North America to Asia, from Europe to Asia to Africa, whatever, not Africa, but, you know, wherever the aurora can be seen. That is how you work it. You work it in areas that can also see the aurora borealis or the aurora australis. That's exactly how it works. Isn't that fascinating? I tell you what, I, I love that segment. I, of all the segments I've been able to do, I think that's my favorite one because it's an area of ham radio we really don't talk a lot about, the aurora. And when we look at QRZ and we see the, you know, the forecast, they show the little box, you know, that shows you what the current forecast is. Okay, looks like this, like today's, today's forecast. Okay, looks like that. All right. It always has the aurora. You see, it shows the aurora and then it shows aurora latitude. Okay, if that's, you know, in red, that's not a good number just isn't a good number. And they always will show the VHF conditions on the top right. First one is Aurora. It'll tell you if the band's open or the band is closed. And what's neat about working the Aurora is, say for example, you're on six. You, As you heard in the video, you can also work two meters. So you can work six, you can work two, and you can work 10. 10 meters will work using Aurora. Now, the brilliant thing is, all you really need is a radio and if you can, an antenna that you can point north if you're in the northern hemisphere or south if you're in the southern hemisphere. And then anybody else that is within sight of the Aurora Borealis can make the call to you. Pretty sweet. That was a fun segment for me to do for you. And I say that humbly because it's something that we've heard on the tests. You know, you get the test that says, you know, 
why are messages distorted when using auroral propagation? Now you hear why. Boy, you need a good ear to do that, don't you? I mean, it's amazing. Thor from Minnesota, that was cool. I've never heard auroral propagation before. That was how I felt last night when I first saw that. Same thing, yeah. Same thing, Thor. Yeah, thanks for saying what you said. I appreciate that. That's the end of the show. We're going to end it. Tomorrow will be fun. We're starting something new on Saturday called Shortwave Saturday. It's, you know, and if you're in ham radio, don't leave for goodness sakes. People that are in shortwave like this show. And so it's their day. They get a day where we'll do some product reviews on shortwave. We'll talk about some shortwave products. We'll even go over some very rare DX stations you can find on your ham radio by just tuning in on the shortwave bands. Join me, won't you? Found 1900 UTC. Until tomorrow, my name's Larry, and my call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. My whole hope here is that y'all will join Ham Radio. Get your license. The Radio Society of Great Britain, it's their field day today. I'd like to just leave you with their address on the internet. These people will help you get into Ham Radio. If you would love to do that, work the Aurora Borealis. Maybe make calls to somebody in a microphone that's in another continent. Like, you know, I just did with the Cook Islands and then the Spain off of a flagpole of all things. My goodness. It's the greatest hobby ever. It really is. But you need to get started. And the best way is to contact a national radio group to help you find a local radio group. That's how you do it. Contact the Radio Society of Great Britain at www.rsgb.org. And join all of us in the most fun and cool thing in the entire world, which is ham radio. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's truly been my honor to do this show for you today. Please subscribe. I don't monetize the channel. I just ask you to subscribe so the people that might have an interest in ham radio or interest in shortwave, the forecast, or products can find it. I humbly thank you. Goodbye, everybody. This is WTVJ, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, concluding another day of programming on Channel 4. As we sign off, we hope you will always include WTVJ as part of your day. Channel 4 offers a world of entertainment, information, and education to South Florida and the Bahamas. From all of us at Florida's pioneer television station, a very pleasant and peaceful good night. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. I still have a memory, and, and sometimes it works, which is brilliant. I'm grateful for that. Now, I've just cut off the national anthem for you. <laughs> but doggone it, when somebody answers the trivia question correctly, you got to give them credit. Kevin, Mike Zero, Mike Charlie Lima, he answered B to today's trivia question, which was, which experiment of Nikola Tesla has proven to be the most beneficial solely for modern radio communication? Kev... Mike Zero, Mike Charlie Lima said it was B, his atmospheric and ground wave experiments, and doggone it, he got it right. Kevin, congratulations. UK with five on the board now. Congratulations to you. Kevin, well done, mate. On RSGB Field Day 2. It's pretty sweet. Well, we did hear most of the national anthem. There's Bob. And there's Larry. God bless you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll just end here, and thank you for watching Ham Radio Live. Sorry about that, Kev. Didn't mean to miss your, your thunder there. You got it right. For goodness sakes, you got to honor that. So thank you for watching, everybody. Until tomorrow, 1900 UTC, I remain humbly yours. Larry, call sign Kilo 7 Hotel November. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>